there have been some serious concerns over over your call for six hundred million dollars in further savings. Are, are you saying that you've been taken out of context? Uh, Look, uh, look every, every politician and every public servant always says to take that out of context. My exact words was, if people are talking about cuts, we're talking about savings. Now, put it in a context that if I've got $500, I've been go out, get told to go out and buy baked beans, I go into the first shop and they're selling it for 50 cents a can, and I see the next shop selling it for 40 cents a can, I'll take the 40 cents, and that means I can buy more baked beans than I can at the 50 cents. So looking at housing, for instance, we've already done modelling on the housing, is we can make a lot of savings in that area, which then can mean that we build more houses. Right, so whereabouts <laughs> is that modelling being done? I mean, we've heard a lot of this, you know, duplication, <clears throat> overspending yeah. um, and modelling, but where, where are the details that, yeah. that people can really rest that on? Yeah, well, look, I, I'm, I'm quite happy to do that. But before I, before I release those details, I'm meeting with the treasurer, as I said, I'm meeting with the, with the, the finance minister to sit down and go through that stuff and test it. Now, I've had I had I've had sat, sat down with people who were in the private business. I'm, I'm a businessman, so I know you know cuts here and there doesn't are not drastic. It's about you know how you do savings and then reinvest those savings back into the system. So we've done, we've looked at some modelling about how you do it in housing and we've, look, and we've taken the experience of what, what has been done in the business world as well as what's been done in New South Wales in a number of areas and we've come up with this modelling and we'll sit down and we'll, and we'll have that conversation. Is this something that's been part of the Indigenous Advisory Council? Uh, now certainly Nairi Brown has said we don't even know how we're going to deal with the cuts that have already been announced in the federal budget mm. and that certainly she wouldn't be looking to any other savings? Is she out of step with the council or are you? No, well look, that I, I mentioned, and if people go back to when the Prime Minister first approached me in February 2013 about uh, taking up this chairmanship, I had said from day one we're going to look at the inefficiencies, we're going to look at the waste and we're going to start But it does seem like your other council members aren't yeah, across I'll what you're talking about. I'll get to that in a second. It was mentioned at every council meeting we've had that I've always was going to look at the waste and inefficiencies and, and I was going to come back to modelling and meeting with the Treasurer and meeting with the, the Prime Minister and, that and talk about these things and go through that modelling. It's been mentioned at all our meetings and it's been, if people go back through my media com, com, conversations over the last 12 months, it's in all of those conversations as well. We're going to cut the inefficiencies, we're going to cut the, the waste and we're going to reinvest that funding back into the system. Tony Abbott before and at the time of his election stated he wanted to be a Prime Minister for Aboriginal Affairs. Mm. How are these cuts and proposed cuts, or to use your word, savings, mm. consistent with that statement? Well, it's very consistent. You know, we, uh, the Prime Minister has made it quite clear from day one, and when he made my appointment from day one, that we were going to reform this whole area. Because if we look at the billions of dollars that have been spent over the last 30, 30 years, and I do mean it is in the billions of dollars, we're looking at $25 billion a year, so imagine multiplying that out over the last 30 years and you look at the, the close and the gap results and, and we're going backwards. So we've got to say, you know, you know, I always point to Albert Einstein, you know, the first sign of madness is that you keep on doing the same thing over and over again and think you're going to get a different chance. We have to change, we have to look at the, at the inefficiencies and the waste in this area and we have to reform the whole process to get the results for Aboriginal people and to get the results for the taxpayer. But having a look at, at, um, mm. at what you've said in the media and at this it need mm. to find effective ways to close the gap, mm. one of the things that you mentioned as a key to closing the gap when you gave your address at mm. the at the Lowager Congress just a, yeah. a couple of weeks ago was you said that it was smoking yeah. and, and poverty. Now $130 million has been cut from those smoking programs that you said were so well, key on the ground. Well, they are key, but we have to... Uh, we have to look at about how we can do better. And you're right in regard to those comments, and I don't walk away from those comments. I look at that just on smoking alone. If we can, if we can reduce half the uh, Aboriginal smoking rates, we get 10 years extra on their life. So that is very important for us. But it's about how we can do things better and how we can make sure we get the better bang for the dollar. What, what, wasn't there before the election a commitment given of maintaining funding, the existing funding for closing the gap initiative? So therefore, how do these cuts? and savings fit in with such a commitment? Well, well it is, a, and then you're right, it is a mixture of both. But the, the, for us, it, you know, as, as, as my um, comments prior to the budgetary come down, we wanted to keep the totality of the budget, and, and I don't walk away from it. The Commissioner of Audit also said that he wants to keep the totality of the budget, and then we reinvest those funds into the, into the areas we need to do. That didn't happen. A broken promise? 
Now, I don't think it is a broken... From us, it wasn't a broken promise. We wanted that. But we realised that through, this, through the problems we've got in the budget, that we have to make sacrifices across the areas. But the issue that when, we, we, when they come and spot with us, we said, don't do the cuts. Go away and look for, for efficiencies in the systems and look at reinvestments. And that's what the Minister did. And we were very pleased at the council level that they did that because those cuts were reduced from 10% down to 4.5% and they and looked at savings within that system. But for closing the gap, mm. is this tantamount to the Abbott government having reneged on its pre-election commitment? No, it's not. I reckon you will see in three years' time uh, through the Indigenous strategy, uh, the advancement strategy, the reforms that we need to do and the focus on <coughs> education, employment and economic development, community safety and sustainability, and you'll see those results over the next three years. And, we'll, and I predict in five years' time we'll have the foundations done to re resolve these issues. $600 million, mm -hmm. something's going to give particularly in remote communities where yeah. a lot of those services that are run out there, these are essential services, they're not frivolous uh, 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 projects. And now a lot of those are run from grants. They're one-off grants or they're, they're annually funded. Are we going to see those diminished or, or closed? Is there any kind of idea of what services are going to go and where? Yeah, well, some of the... Some of the um, <coughs> you've seen some of the uh, announcements already in regard to some of the... Some of the, re the uh, programs that you know you're looking at Congress, for instance, that's that's not going to be funded past the 2017 year period. Uh, so, you, when some announcements have been made, uh, is for us it's, a, it's looking at in, in how they do some of the reinvestments. So, look, health was a good one. They they did make some cuts here, but they also reinvested some extra money into that area. Con Congress. So, over the next four years, now this is uh, the uh, Aboriginal medical service. So, over the next four years, the actual funding into the medical services actually goes up and then after that then you start looking at some of those savings. Mm. Mm. Um, I think that what we're looking at on the ground and particularly some of the feedback that we've had today is uh, are you particularly concerned that with the other measures in the budget, so particularly the co-payment mm. and uh, some of the welfare cuts that we're seeing, mm. that Indigenous people, particularly in remote communities, are getting a double hit? Mm. The, the, <coughs> excuse me, there's a couple of issues I did raise up. One was the welfare reform stuff and we go to the six-month payment. The other one was the $7 thing. We were concerned of that at the council level. That was discussed at our last council meeting. The minister came to that council meeting and did a presentation to us on regard to the $7, $7 co-payment. There are a lot of Aboriginal people, he's already mentioned this out there, that will be looking at exemptions from that area and he's already made those announcements about that. So we were comfortable with that. There's still concerns. You're, you're comfortable that we the people aren't We were comfortable with what he said at that meeting, but and, we still have some concerns about that. We still have to look at how far that goes. But, we, but from his comments at that meeting, we were comfortable with it. The other thing in regard, the concerns we have in regard to the, the uh, welfare reform stuff is that we haven't had the uh, forest review come in. So that's about jobs and training. And we believe that it, that's going to get out of sync. That could cause problems for us. But we want that review as quickly as possible. Today I got an email from the Prime Minister's office. We're actually going to have a special sitting in May, uh, June this year, so a couple of weeks away, and we're going to address that issue. Address some of these issues. Yeah. And are you concerned at all that you're seen to be out of step with uh, Indigenous communities and that uh, perhaps more representing um, what the needs of the government are than than the needs of the, the common man? No, no. What the, what the needs are is what the service deliveries need to happen on the ground. So the push is about how we get the money out of Canberra Sydney, Perth, Darwin and actually get it out into the communities and then we start looking about how, how we can get innovation and reforms that need to happen. And, we, and, any, and I, I was at a meeting this week on Monday with the National Youth, Indigenous Youth Parliament. I said, put up your hands if you think everything's fine in Indigenous affairs and there's no waste and there's no inefficiencies in the system. Not one of those delegates put their hand up. I probably I said, say that about <coughs> so a said, great number of departments. I, of course you can. So, But this area is very critical with us because you're looking at the last close in the gap figures. We were going backwards in a number of areas. So this is a very critical thing that we have to deal with. Warren Mundine from the Prime Minister's Indigenous Advisory Council, the head of that. Thanks very much for giving your oh, time this evening. Yeah, thank you very much for having me.